Afternoon. We are about to leave Saxel B. We've been in Saxel B for a couple of days. Three nights we've had. And you're allowed three nights, so. So that's exactly right. I could stay longer, to be honest. I know you mean. But we wouldn't be allowed to. No, no, but if we were allowed. Then we could stay longer. Yeah, it's a nice enough place. I've been walking in each morning to Lincoln. Um, it's about a six mile walk. And that's been helpful. Um, it's also allowed me to get some groceries and stuff and bring the train back. It's pretty inexpensive to take the train here, at least in one direction. Um, yeah. So today we are hopefully going to end up in Gainsborough. We're about to go on the tidal trent uh, from Torxey. It's about an hour and a half, or a bit over an hour and a half to Torxey. We're booked in the lock at 5 p.m. because that's when the tide is. And then I think we'll get to Gainsborough. I can't remember how long it is, maybe 8.30? Around about 8, 8.30. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, the weather has decided to suck in as well. It's been sunny and, and warm every day for the last several days. It's been completely clear. And uh, today was fine, and today was dandy, and today was fine, and clear, and wonderful. And then all of a sudden, clouds, and now... A bit uh, wind. Yeah, some wind, and in about an hour to an hour and a half, it's supposed to start raining. <laughs> so, that's good timing. I have, because we've both been working, like, until now, it's like 2.30. I haven't really been thinking about the fact that we've got to cruise or that we're going on a tidal river mm. or that we're mooring on a tidal river. It'll be good fun. Yeah, I think it's easier going out the lock than going in. So to, tomorrow when we go from Gainsborough to West Stockwood, I'll be more worried. That's the one to worry about. This is nothing. That's tricky. could get the train to Redford. That's true. You could get the train to Redford from Gainsborough and I could do it on my own. So, yeah, so that would work. All right, should we get going? Yep. George is prepared, engines running, uh, liquids are, are evacuated. Um, we're evacuated as well, and we're about to evacuate. So, thank you, Saxoby. Also, the cafe does really good scones. I think it was just a boat. Somebody's, somebody moving way too fast and then slowing down on. And when we arrived, on these moorings, um, they were empty, now they're chocolate block full. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See ya! <laughs> See you later. The Mandarin Chinese place still does it, salt and pepper chips, but they weren't very good. Didn't them as well. I was so excited when I remembered about them and sent Michael to get them. Let's see, what does the map tell us about? Despite the disappointing chips, Saxelby gets a thumbs up from us. There's everything you could need here. Shops for the essentials, takeaways and pubs, and train and bus links to Gainsborough and Lincoln. All in all, it's a really comfortable place to stay. So we've just come through the footbridge. So we've got about a mile and a half to Drinksy Nook, where we will do a right-hand turn, slow right-hand turn. And then two and a half miles approximately in more or less a dead straight line, followed by a slow left-hand turn, and then about a mile in towards the office. These are the last few houses we'll pass as we leave the village. It's about five miles from here to Torxy Lock, which is at the junction with the tidal trend. As we travel along the navigation, we remember that the Foss Dyke is another one of those waterways that makes you feel you're stuck down in a ditch. Just outside Saxelby is a small settlement of houses along the West Bank. There's also a farm and campsite here, and a short stretch of private moorings. I rather like this detached lookout tower next to the bungalow. We're just passing the last of the private moorings now, and here's a seven kilometre marker, which means we're seven kilometres from the junction. The sky's looking quite moody, and the wind has picked up, which isn't helping my nerves about going onto the tidal river.
the distance you can see the chimneys of one of the power stations that sits on the bank of the Trent. There's a lot of visitor moorings at Torxy, and this is the start of them. There's also more below the lot. We're still a kilometre from the junction here. And the reason they start so far away is because there are private moorings on both sides of the canal from here all the way to the lock. We quite fancy this colour for Perseverance. What does everyone think? On the left behind the service point moorings is the bold and distinctive Torxy Lock Topery sign. So we've made it to Torxy, we're an hour early. So Michael's going to go and have a tea and then a shower. I, I might not actually have a tea, I might have a hot shower or something. But I've started, I've had three different types of tea now since I've come to England. It's now British. Yeah. It's all happened in the last week. Something weird's happened. All right. I'm starting to get nervous about the tidal section, especially because it's been really windy. I'm nervous about my blood starting to run as Earl Grey. All right. All right. So just waiting for the tide now. Been here about an hour. George has got his adventure jacket on. <laughs> and um, yeah, ready to go. So it's half an hour later, we're still waiting for the tide. Um, hopefully it won't be too much longer, otherwise we're going to be arriving in the dark. We did have one of these Trent Tidal guides. This is version 18, I think we had about version 2, <laughs> but we can't find it, so we just bought another one. If it doesn't blow in the, way in the wind, it will be quite helpful. Finally the water's at the right level and it's time for us to go. The lock keepers get the gates opening and Michael unties the boat. We get the green light and we can bring Perseverance into the lock. The lock keepers close the gates behind us and we begin the descent to the river level. George is on lookout ready to tell Michael when the river gates open. As we're leaving the lock there's a slightly worrying moment as the boat seems to run aground. After a little bit of manoeuvring we're free and can continue out into the channel. These are the visitor moorings below the lock. They're on pontoons that rise and fall with the tide, so if you're on a journey on the tidal trench, you can stop here safely without having to go through the lock. And as you can see, there's room for lots of boats. Ahead are the chimneys of the now decommissioned Cotton Power Station. The chimneys are actually due to be demolished by the end of next year. We reach the main river now and are turning right to head downstream with the flow of the outgoing tidal water towards Gainsborough. So we're off. I'm quite nervous. I'm not. We're passing uh, the Torxy Castle. Which is a manor house. Just told Michael that. And the power station. So it doesn't seem to be very active. There's eight chimneys. Michael made me count them to calm my nerves. Didn't really work. No, well, you got to keep doing it. There's, there's still going to be eight, even if I count them in a minute. No, I know there'll still be eight, but you count them up, then you count them down, then you do like X, Y, Z. Just grounding exercise. Um, so we're coming up to a little island. I've already told Michael which way to go, even though he already knows which way to go. <laughs> and then we're going under, is it the viaduct, the Torxy viaduct? Yeah. Oh, we've walked over this, haven't we? Yep. Nice, I remember now. We'll be following our route on our newly purchased Tidal Trent Guide. There's a few landmarks to look out for and some navigation notes to follow, like which side of the river to keep to at which point. Generally though, you stick to the outside of the bend or stay in the middle of the river. We reminisce about walking George to this little river beach the last time we stopped in Torxy. The Torxy Viaduct was part of the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway, but the bridge closed in 1959. It's had a new lease of life since 2016 when it became a walking route and it's quite something to make the walk across. As we head downstream, George uses his ears to demonstrate how windy it is out on the river today. 
One of the landmarks listed on the navigation guide that we're looking out for is Ruin, and we think this must be it. We've got no idea what it once was though. And then there's much excitement as we see not one but three narrow boats approaching us. We've seen so few boats moving in the last few months, it's actually quite thrilling to see some river traffic. They could have come from Gainsborough or West Stockwith, or maybe even Kidby. They're currently pushing against the water whilst we're riding the tide down. These electricity pylons are actually another landmark listed on the guide, and soon after we pass them, there's a tight meander in the river and a section of shallow rock on both sides, which means we'd need to take a very specific line in the river. When we get to Martin Mill and Trent Port, we need to align two marker posts with our bow and stern and travel in a straight line from the middle of the river. We decide that this faded red brush type thing on top of the white pole must be the first marker. Behind the marker, we spot the old windmill tower of Martin Mill. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a marker in the trees over there that we've had to line up with through this uh, section because there's rocks in the water on both sides but it's not low tide so probably not even an issue. Yeah she says it's not an issue but if we suddenly go sideways then it was in fact an issue. Hard moral. There isn't too much to see for a while as we travel north other than lots and lots of trees and bushes. We start to get glimpses of the chimneys of West Burton Power Station and it's fascinating to watch them move across the landscape as we navigate the twists and turns of the river. And there are the chimneys of Cotton Power Station behind us. The village of Littleborough marks the location of an historic Roman causeway crossing. In 1066, Harold and his army crossed the Trent by this route on their way to Hastings. I believe there was also a ferry here for some time and despite plans being made for a bridge, one was never built. The next landmark we need to look out for is listed as fully the Chateau. It's a building that could be rented out as short-stay holiday accommodation and its webpage describes how the Chateau was built in 1748 for a prosperous lawyer from Gainsborough named Thomas Hutton who used it as a summer house. It was restored in the 1980s and apparently now offers a glimpse of Georgian life. I imagine they mean affluent Georgian life rather than everyday Georgian life. We haven't seen too many grazing animals today other than this lone lamb at the water's edge here. Through the trees we get the most fleeting view of the village of Nath and the Grand Nath Hall. It's in an area of historic interest as near the hall are the remains of a 16th century garden and an 18th century deer park. But George couldn't be less interested. The West Burton power station is definitely getting closer. But then we turn the corner and it's gone again. This is the outlet of the Sturton pumping station. After seeing it on the horizon for miles, once we're alongside the power station, there isn't actually much to see from the river at all. Here the Trent Navigation Guide lists four posts in water, which is an accurate description but doesn't actually give any indication of what they were used for. An old wharf perhaps? Now passing under the Gainsborough Railway Viaduct, apparently it's known locally as the Iron Bridge. Now we're about just two kilometres away from our mooring for the night, and I'm so ready to stop. We pass another sluice, presumably it's also used for drainage purposes. Around the bend, and we get our first view of the huge Kerry Mill that dominates the riverbank here. I really enjoy seeing these huge river wharfs and the giant mooring bollards that line them. You can only imagine the ships that would have moored here in the past. In the 16th century, Gainsbury took the place of Torxey as the main inland port of the Trent. For the next 300 years, trade along the river was increasingly important. Goods from the upstream industries were transferred to seagoing vessels for passage down to London or overseas, and goods from downstream were brought here and then transferred to shallow draft boats for transport further inland. So we've made it to the Gainsborough Moorings and we're going to quickly just turn around so that we are mooring up into the direction or against the flow of the river just to give Michael more control and we'll spin around again in the morning.
Because we're riding the tide, we're actually travelling faster than our engine is taking us. By turning around, it means we'll have to push against the flow of the water, meaning our forward momentum will be much slower, making mooring up easier and safer too. That's the last thing we needed is when we just moored up. The rain, the rain just to kick in. Just it wasn't heavy, second. but it was like dense. <laughs> yeah, it was enough that you felt like I'm in a cloud <laughs> and I'm getting moist. <laughs> so we're here around the pontoon mooring in Gainsborough. Um, took a little bit of jogging around to get lined up with it and get over because the, uh, the tide is still moving out. So we had to go past, spin around, come back, and I ended up getting the nose uh, kind of not far enough over. And, yeah, I uh, couldn't work out what you were doing. Well, what I was trying to do was just sort of get us closer because I came in towards it and the nose went out a bit because I, there must be a current. Ooh. Because we know from the last time we were here that it's quite shallow um, on the pontoon. That low tide. Yeah, that it, the lowest tide, the end of the pontoon was on the mud. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we're in a kind of deeper section right now. I might put a time lapse on yeah. to, to get the uh, tide. Yeah. But it's a good, good trip. Yeah. It's just, I wish it wasn't so late. I don't even know what time it is now. It must be about. It's like at least 7.40, somewhere around there. Um, so it's, so it's definitely getting towards sunset. Um, in fact, the sun seems to have set. and uh, Or at least it's gone behind that hill over there. <laughs> so it's definitely uh, darker. And it's dinner time. And, uh, and yet I've got to go get an Amazon thing. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's it. That's the end of the video. That's the end of the video. So, um, donkey shanks, Alvida's name. I should always look up something, but I, I, yeah. I think maybe we just won't do it. Yeah, maybe we just won't do it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed uh, the trip to Canesborough along the River Trent. Title: Birds. Power stations. That's the main thing I remember. Lots of power stations. Um. All right? Yeah. Okay. See you in a bit. Afternoon? Evening? No, afternoon? Last time we did this stretch, our, um, one of our belts broke. Yeah, and I had to jump on a hot engine and burn my bits. And we're about two kilometers. These electricity pylons are actually another lamp park. Lamp park? What's a lamp park? Mm -hmm.